And as soon as they left the synagogue, uh, they, le- they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, he took her hand, and he helped her up. Parentheses here, he healed her. And this is a miraculous healing because if you know, if you've had a fever before, even if your fever is gone, it takes a while to recover. But immediately she recovers and she begins to wait on them. Verse 32, so that evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Isn't it amazing that the people waited until sundown to bring the sick and the demon possessed to Jesus? Do you realize what they did? They, 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 they wanted, they had to fulfill the religious obligation first. They, they had to follow the letter of the law before they could take these people to, to Jesus. Okay, so Jesus has this big healing ministry and he's, he's casting out demons and he's healing people of all types of diseases. It was an awesome night that night. It's been a busy day. He goes to bed, verse 35, very early in the morning. How early? While it was still dark. Jesus got up, he left the house, and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, and by the way, another parenthesis, you might say they kind of scolded him. They they kind of... um, had this, you're not where you're supposed to be tone with them. Say, Tom, how'd you know their tone? I'm I'm pretty much guessing it from what is said next. Because it says they exclaimed. You know, you put a, put a, uh, you know, a little emphasis there that that they're, they're getting a little testy with Jesus. Hey, everyone's looking for you. In other words, you're not where you were supposed to be, Jesus. And Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The master's plan and what the master's plan is all about. Right here in these two events, which took place over about probably 12 hours or a little bit more period of time, we've got Jesus going to Simon's house. His mother-in-law is there. What what does that imply, Jay, if Simon's got a mother-in-law? If Simon's got a mother-in-law, he also has a wife. I, I, I knew you were right on top of it. That's why I asked you, see? So, so, so we can assume Simon's married. He's got a mother-in-law, right? And she's sick. And he loves his mother-in-law very much, like I love my mother-in-law. And he wanted to see her get healed. And so, um, anyhow, then... Other people know about this. They hear about this and other things that Jesus has done. So all these people come. They crowd the house. I mean, this place is packed. And Jesus is just working all night long. And, and the next morning, he gets up and he, and, and he, he, he leaves. And he goes and prays. And, and his disciples are a little bit upset about that. And he said, well, you know, we need to move on to these other people who need to hear the gospel. So, so what we have here is a pattern, a plan, if you will, that you're going to see duplicated over and over again, not accidentally or coincidentally. Jesus has a master plan. He is the master plan. And so I want to look at the master's plan versus the it's all about me plan. And he's calling us to this master plan. And the master's plan is all about, first of all, we see people. Do not miss that. The master's plan is all about people and not about programs. Now, one thing I don't want anyone hearing me saying is that somehow programs are a bad thing. Programs are a bad thing if they're not about people. And you say, how can a program not be about people? They can be. Oh my goodness, I don't know how many times, and those of you who have been involved in church work over the years, sometimes the program ends up being all about the program. And we can even forget about all the people. But if the program is not all about people, then we're missing the master's plan. Jesus was all about people. Can you just imagine all these people coming to Simon's house and and the sick and the demon-possessed? 
And Jesus continued to make himself available to people. We'll look again over in Mark. As we said, here's Jesus, big old crowd of people. And Jairus comes up, you know, you know, synagogue ruler. And he says, hey, my daughter's dying. Will you take care of her? Yeah, and I'm taking care of these people. And then lady with the bleeding issue comes up and she deals with it. He has to deal with her. You know, I mean, it's all about people. Jesus always makes himself available to people. And, and something an elder told me a long time ago has been a part of my ministry is it doesn't matter what I'm doing. When people come in, it's about them. Stop what I'm doing. It's about them. Uh, maybe I'm studying for a sermon. You know, maybe I'm working on some program. Whatever. Doesn't matter. They say, oh, I, I'm sorry to disturb you. It doesn't matter. Boom. You're the agenda now. It's got to be about people and not primarily about programs. You know, what, what was their expectation of Jesus? Why is it that all these people showed up at his house? Why did all these folks show up? These people showed up because they had heard the news, the good news about Jesus, that, that he heals people. And, and they drives out demons. And, and, and maybe they had this expectation of Jesus that, hey, here's a miracle worker. We're, we're coming to, to get a miracle done. But Jesus was all about people. Full of mercy, full of compassion. Nobody was busier than Jesus was, huh? Nobody is busier. But he always made time for their immediate pressing needs. Okay, you got that? I want to make sure we catch that. He, whether it was a physical healing, whatever their a demon possessed, he's going to deal with those immediate needs. Lady at the well, water, dealing with the water. He's always dealing with their immediate needs. But he does not end there. I feel like that's a tragic place oftentimes in, in, in many churches is that we feel like we've, we got the water. You know, we, we got them food. We got them healed. We got the demon out of them, you know. Now we're to done. their ultimate need. And their ultimate need was not just the stuff that's going on here in this world. The ultimate need was what? They needed to repent and believe the gospel. And he makes this consistent throughout uh, his ministry. Whenever he deals with someone who's physically sick, ultimately he gets them what they need. All right? And so... When we get to the point here where he's praying early in the morning, you know, why didn't he stay there? Why didn't he stay at Simon, Andrew's house, Simon, and Andrew, Simon and Andrew's house? I mean, how many people could say, man, we got a good thing going here. Attendance is increasing and people are coming, Jesus, and they, they're, they're, they're waiting for you. We got even twice as many that were there yesterday. And it just makes sense to us. Oh, yeah, we got a, oh, got a great thing going here. And Jesus says, no. No, I need to move on. He had shared the gospel here. He had blessed many people here. Now he's counting on the people that are there. They've heard the good news. They have the message. Let them now minister to those other people. We got to go to folks who have not heard it yet. And so it's about people, but it's about people's ultimate need in testifying to the truth, to the good news. So that people can change. It's all about the gospel. Today, if you hear anything, it's all about the gospel. The master's plan is it's all about the gospel. The programs are not wrong if they're ultimately about people changing, repenting, and believing in the gospel. I really believe every single program, everything that we do, new song... As, as, as a body of Christ, needs to ultimately find its place in sharing the gospel with people so that they can change. I live to worship you, but a part of my worship is taking that good news to people. It's all about the gospel. All about sharing the good news. That's why Jesus came. Luke chapter 10, verse 13. I want to share something with you here. Uh, here, Jesus is... is criticizing some specific towns. Why? Because they had seen miracles and did not change. So he says, Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they'd have repented a long time ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Do you get it? He didn't come primarily to work miracles. He didn't come primarily to cast out demons. He came ultimately to share the gospel, to believe his message. His message is life and death, whether we believe it or not. John chapter 8, verse 24, he said, unless you believe that I am who I say I am, you'll die in your sins, separated from God. 